at a basic budget focused AR setup. Um, kind of a jack of all trades, master of none build. Um, geared more towards a recce um, style build with the LPVO on top. So let's go on and jump right into it. All right, so grand thumb set the standard. We're gonna go tip to bum on this rifle and just break it down. Kind of give you guys a parts overview. Um, give some feedback and thoughts about the parts I have on this rifle. So up front, this is a Vietnam style three prong flash hider. It's $10 at a gun store. I thought I'd give it a try. It's actually really, really good at suppressing the flash of your rifle. Um, no complaints on that. For $15, you really can't beat it. Um, eventually, we're gonna throw something else on here whenever I get my suppressor adapter in. Uh, that's a whole other story, but anyway. Vietnam era or style three prong flash hider on the front. So moving back down, we have a Surefire Scout light on here. I've had this um, since my airsofting days. So I've had this light for a good long while. It's never failed me. Uh, I don't use a tail switch on it, a pigtail switch on it. I just use the pressure, um, the button on there. It is hooked up on a, just a Magpul MWOC 45 degree cant mount. Um, it's worked great for me, no issues with it at all. So as far as operation of the light, most people will have their, their tail switches or their buttons up top on the rail. With me, I'm a left-handed shooter, mind you. I can reach over the top of the gun, and with my thumb, I can depress that light whenever I need to. So that's worked out great for me. No NDs or anything silly like that. No worrying about cable management there. So great light, love the Surefire. Moving on down, we have a Bravo Company uh, angled foregrip. It is at an 89 degree, kind of a middle finger to the ATF. Um, you can put this on pistols, but not a pistol brace as of now. Hopefully that's gonna get overturned here soon, but I love this grip. I don't use it as a traditional foregrip. It's more of a hand stop for me. I've seen people cut them down. I just haven't felt the need to. Um, but when I'm, when I'm indexing the rifle, I pull it into my body using that as a hand stop opposed to this, the, the traditional foregrip. Um, that's a it's a great great way to get some more control on the front end of your rifle I have it pushed out pretty far because I have really long arms um, can get down on that rifle and torque down really pull it into my body so I love the BCM grip it's great for barricades um, you can mount that up on a barricade that's what the paint's kind of scratched up on there um, so it's it's done absolute wonders for me no complaints about it at all so moving on to the rail system we have a Midwest Industries, I can't remember the exact name of this rail, but it is a 12.7 inch MWOC rail with a Picatinny rail on top, model Picatinny rail up top. Uh, super duper thin handguard, very, very sturdy. Um, no flexing on it whatsoever or anything like you'd need. Um, so I've been very pleased with that at the time. It was super duper cheap too. Um, and guys, Here's a tip for you to wait for stuff to go on sale. Um, I'll get into the, the cost and everything of this rifle at the end, but uh, if, if, you're, if you're patient and you aren't impulse buying, you'll save a lot of money that way. So um, this rail's been great. We have cutie points up at the front and at the rear of the rail, kind of in the middle of the rifle. I know some folks who have to run their cuties at the middle and the rear of their, their rifle. Uh, I prefer to run it very front and the very back. I got my sling, I'm filming off site today, so that's a little bit of an oopsie there, but that's all right. But uh, the barrel net and the lockup on this rail is absolutely outstanding for, for what I paid for it. There's an anti-rotation pin down here at the bottom interface with the rail. It's been bomb proof, so absolutely love that Midwest Industries rail. Moving to the top, I have an OG Strike Eagle on here. So this is the one to six model, not the one to eight. Um, it has Vortex's uh, knockoff of the ACSS reticle in there. I, I don't care for the reticle that much. Um, it's a first focal plane optic, so uh, it's all right for, for what I need it to. Eventually, we're going to upgrade it, but again, this is kind of a budget-focused um, recce build, if you will. Very loose recce build. So, moving down to the bottom, we just have an Anderson little receiver. Guys, a receiver is a receiver. Um, quit fighting on the internet about it. There's three little receiver manufacturers in the country. 
Anderson, Aero Precision, and Palmetto State Armory. So you're paying that extra money for a stamp on the receiver. Um, as long as it's in spec, it's good to go. So cut that crap out, um, just obnoxious. So just running an Anderson lower. The parts kit I use in this is a CMMG parts kit. I've been very, very impressed with their mil spec triggers. They come polished from the factory. Um, again, it's a mil spec trigger, so it's, it's not everything, but for what it is, it's a really solid trigger. It's about five pounds, as you would expect. Pretty smooth break, especially for mil, mil spec triggers, just in a parts kit. Great stuff there, I had no issues with it. Um, no issues with the internals on this rifle at all. Um, and I've, I've, again, I've had about 10,000 rounds on this gun so far, so I haven't had to change anything out on it, except for the charging handle, which I'll get into in a second. So, moving on down, we have a Magpul K-Grip. Um, this is the slim version. I enjoy it a lot. It's got a really good grip angle on there. Uh, fits my hand very well. Uh, as far as grips go, it gets, what, it gets what's comfortable for you. Uh, it doesn't matter too much on here, but I went with the Magpul. It feels real nice in my hands. So, as far as the bolt carrier group, um, I actually got this upper receiver set. So, upper receiver, barrel, bolt carrier group, and gas system, minus the gas blocks. I had to change that from Midway USA, actually. It's their in-house brand, AR Stoner. Uh, I've been very impressed with it for, for what I paid especially. I'm not sure who makes their barrels, um, but I've been, I've been fairly impressed with it. It's a one and eight twist, 16-inch uh, barrel on there. And I'm shooting about a minute and a half, minute and a quarter um, with just 55 grain federal ammunition, Winchester ammunition. So your your off the shelf stuff. Um, and I've been very impressed with it. It's been it's been performing very very well. No signs of wear on the barrel or anything yet. Um, it's dirty, but that's to be expected. So, and then with that came the AR Stoner bolt carrier group, and it's a little bit different than your standard AR bolt carrier group. Instead of being a cylindrical style cut, this is actually a hex, hexagonal cut. I don't know if you guys can see it there. I'll put in some close-up shots. We can't see it in the video. So it's more of a hexagonal design. Um, I'm not quite sure, to be honest, what that does. Uh, more mass on the bulk hair group, possibly, but I've been, I've been pleased with it, no complaints. It's a nickel boron bolt, so cleaning is extremely easy. You can literally wipe the carbon off of the off of the bolt. It holds lubricant very well, so uh, I would highly recommend a nickel boron bolt carrier group. It's it's one of the best finishes you can get, in my opinion, as far as cleaning and maintaining. So moving to the charging handle, we are using a Radian Raptor right there. And uh, funny story about this, I actually cheaped out and just stuck with a mil spec charging handle for the longest time. And in my early days of shooting, I was shooting a whole bunch of Tula steel case ammo through this. And that ammo's fine, but the, the thing is with it, after you shoot for a while, the ammunition heats up and that steel expands in the chamber if you leave a round in the chamber and between drills or, or whatever. So I had a round stuck in the chamber and I went to mortar my AR as, as you do. Um, and the charging handle snapped in half on me. So uh, I've gone to Radian Raptor ever since. I use it on all my ARs, love it, and I will never go back. Uh, great product, and I'm a left-handed handed person too. So having uh, both sides of the wing to pull on, very, very, very helpful. So forward assist on this upper as well. Uh, I'm, I've been a fan of forward assist. I've used them several times. There's an argument for them, there's an argument against them. I don't really care. I prefer them, but it's not the end of the world. So moving back here to the buttstock, we're running a Voltor Systems uh, buttstock. I've had this in a box forever. I've ran the B5 sop mod stock on here, some LE crane stocks, uh, that sort of thing. But I ended up going with the Voltor. It gets me a really good cheek weld on here. And in the rear of it, actually, you have some storage so you can put some candy or batteries or whatever you want in there for later. So that's been awesome. So that is the rifle build as far as parts are concerned. So let's go into a little bit of mindset and then talking about the reason why you would build a rifle like this, uh, as well as some pricing points. So the reason I built this rifle the way I did, 
Uh, I was new into shooting. This was my first firearm ever. So I wanted something that would do everything well, but not necessarily the best. So jack of all trades, master of none. And this rifle can do it. Um, I have the low power variable optic on top, so I can switch it to one power. It's not the best at shooting at one power. It's, it's not better than a red dot, but it's better than iron sights. And then I also have the 6X magnification. It's not better than a dedicated six, uh, power optic or, or a rifle scope of higher magnification, but it still allows me to see out there, get some PID on longer range targets, as well as shooting at some farther distances. I've taken this rifle out to 600 meters and it'll do it all day long. Um, so I have no, no doubts there with this. So that's kind of the mindset why I wanted to build it. I just wanted a rifle I could really dive into, make it my own, and have it do everything I wanted just okay enough. Um, and, and it's done very, very well at that for me um, until I started getting into more specialized arrows. I still shoot this tons. This is still one of my favorite firearms I own. Um, and I still love to train with it and everything, but this is the first gun that I got proficient with and taught myself how to maintain firearms and work on them and dove into ballistics and everything. So this has been a really, really awesome project to kind of see it come full circle. And it's never done. None of my rifles are ever done. I'm constantly upgrading and figuring out what I like better, what I don't need, what I need on there. So everything's a continuous project. So as far as setups for optics, I'm running a 100 meter zero. Um, a lot of people will bicker over that 25, 300 zero, 200 zero, 100 zero, 50 yard zero, whatever. Um, where I'm at, I found it best, 100 meter zero works great. Uh, we're dealing with a lot of thick, dense woods here and hills, so there's not a lot of open open areas. So I'd say about 100 meters and just knowing my holds is pretty good. And BDCs are gimmicks, but it winds up with the BDC pretty okay in here. Um, so that's been pretty awesome, but 100 meter zero for, for the 16 inch gun has worked really, really good for me. So let's talk about pricing real quick. So I did say budget build at the beginning. This whole rifle, minus the optic, cost me $400. $400 for this entire rifle. Uh, the optic itself, when I purchased it new, was about three, $400, because I purchased it when the Strike Eagles were first getting big. So um, this is a budget rifle. Uh, all in all, with everything on here, it's, it's under a thousand dollar build, easy, easily. So um, if, if you can't find anything pre-built from the factory that you like, I highly suggest getting into building your own rifle, especially in the AR platform. Wait for sales to go on. Midwest uh, or Midway USA has tons of sales year round. Um, that's what helped me out with this when I, was, when I was getting started working a minimum wage job. I was able to pay for all this. Uh, it took about a month to wait for parts and everything and wait for them to go on sale with free shipping and all that. But $400 for a rifle that performs this well, you can't ask for anything more with that. Um, so I've been extremely pleased, extremely impressed with the performance of this rifle. This will continue to stay in the collection and in the training rotation for sure. All right, and then my, my disclaimer, whenever I do a rifle review or overview, don't clone this. Don't clone it. Uh, this is what works for me. It's not gonna work for you. You have to go out and shoot your guns and train on them in order to figure out what your rifle setups are gonna look like or what you're gonna need. Don't go out and, and clone a build just because it looks cool and then wonder why you suck because that rifle's not built to you. It's built to whoever you cloned it from. Uh, I will say in the cloning market of the firearms industry, so we're talking Mark 18s, that kind of thing. That's cool, I love it. Um, I have a Mark 18 as well. If you wanna do kosher, don't take a picture and build out that rifle. Go set all your kosher options for that clone build out in front of you. Figure out what works best for you, what you like best, where you wanna set it up. It's okay to have some originality in guns. Believe it or not, contrary to popular belief, it is okay. So that is my big disclaimer here. Don't clone this rifle. This is just kind of giving ideas for what a great base budget setup slash base recce rig rifle would look like. Um, and this gun has done amazing at just that. So guys, um, get out there, train, hit the gym, make sure you're shooting, save on ammo. Um, 
don't buy a whole bunch of stupid guns. Buy one gun and get a whole bunch of ammo for it. And I got nothing else for you. We'll see you in the next one.